this video I'll be doing a playthrough of Rack.Word from the year 2000, but first, a little bit of history. Rack was authored by Frederick Johansson, and is the first part in a trilogy of maps. The series as a whole was actually quite influential and is held in very high regard. Rack 2 and 3 have received numerous awards. The original inspiration for Vrak was Map 4 of a 1996 WOD called Dystopia 3 and the game Dark Forces, hence the theme of Vrak, science facilities floating in space. Just a quick side note, Dystopia 3 is actually a highly influential WOD in its own right, and is still really cool and difficult to play to this day, so check that out. The story of Vrak is as follows. You are somewhere on a base, located somewhere in space. The demons have invaded the base, and you better clean up, or else, Muse will get you. Well, we wouldn't want that, so join me as I go on a playthrough of Brack 1. Let's enter the space station. To descent music, no less. Here we go. So yeah, this map came out in November of 2000, and it's by Frederick Johansson. And as I said in the intro, it was sort of heavily inspired by not only Dark Forces and just sort of obviously a love of space station themed stuff, but also a particular map from that Dystopia 3 WOD which I'd recommend checking out, and maybe I'll play as well. But here we go, let's go through the airlock. A bit ominous, but let's go. I really like this actually, it's such a simple cool touch, but how you have to press both switches and the door just sort of slowly opens, really sells the whole airlock thing. And here we go. I love the way this is like a sort of worn out or lived in space station. It reminds me of like, you know, the Alien franchise or something. I'm a huge sucker for this kind of thing. Star Wars, Alien, anything sort of gritty space station related. I love it. You know, Doom already has that going on as well. I mean, he's supposed to be on the moons of Mars, right? The demons are invading in what looks like a pretty, you know, used facility. It's cool stuff. But yeah, these maps, I mean, map two and three in the series, so rack two and three. What is going on? Did I just get pelted by a bunch of imp fireballs that I couldn't see seriously? Well, there goes all my precious health, and that's really annoying because this map is light on for health, at least in the opening stages. And yeah, obviously this looks like a secret, but it's actually a progression that we'll get to do later. See, what was I saying before I got rudely interrupted by a million imp fireballs? Yeah, the next two maps in the series, Rack 2 and Rack 3, are really highly regarded. They have all sorts of awards on Doom World and have CAC awards and that kind of thing. But, you know, Rack 1, I think, is um, a really worthy sort of intro to the whole series. Uh, you know, almost a 90s wad, uh, but sort of still way ahead of its time. It's, you know, quite good looking and very sort of fun and playable, even in the modern day. Hence why I'm pretty keen to show it off. I will go on to play the other Vraks, I would say, but yeah, I had to start with map one. Nice shot, Mr. Hell Knight. And yeah, as you can see to our left, if you look out our window to the left, the obvious uh, influence that this WOD, I think, had on things like, say, Scythe X. I bet you Eric Arm was a big fan of this WOD because this looks a lot like Scythe X, or should I say, Scythe X looks a lot like Vrak. Really cool stuff. And yeah, I mean, it's it's a quirk of the mapping why all these monsters can't see you. I mean, thankfully, I'd be getting wrecked right now. But you can imagine this window maybe has like a force field in it or something, an invisible barrier, so your imagination rationalizes it pretty damn well. And it's just such a cool look, you know, floating in space like that. Something that the Doom engine can do and looks really cool. All right, Mr. Baron, I just want these stim packs. I have no qualms with you. I want to push my way outside and get this super shotgun. Maps become... Hell yeah, what a shot! Good work, Mr. Baron. We all love to see that. If only I could get an action replay on that. Well, I mean, I guess if you're watching this, rewind the video. Hell yeah. Some tasty jibs right there. The reward is to die. So I saw that an imp's gone in here. I don't have the chain gun yet, so I'll just... Ah, oh, well, I've used two shells anyway. Uh, so, quite obviously we need the yellow key. I quite like this. The texture texture ring, generally speaking, in this wad is pretty cool. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it just mostly, if not entirely, does use the Doom 2 stock textures. Which is pretty impressive. I have to say. So yeah, the next couple of maps in the series, Rack uh, 2 and 3, get a hell of a lot more detailed. And harder. But yeah, as I was saying, I think this one is a very cool... 
um, opening to the whole series. And yeah, it's got this really like sort of lived in feel, sets up a cool few sort of unique aspects that it has all of its own, such as the airlocks and this sort of grate over the um, you know, tech parts. Okay, now we're going to get the chain gun, which I like. And yeah, I haven't played this in like a couple of weeks. I played it a couple of weeks ago, fully intending to uh, record a video, and then I got sick, so I've had to wait a little bit. And now I'm doing this playthrough, you know, not blind or semi-blind by any means, but um, not totally up to speed on where everything is, but I'm pretty sure I remember. Starting with right here, so see everything has bars on it, except for this panel. And it's just a backpack, but still, welcome. And this is going to let us into here. We want to close this guy down ASAP. But we have also let out cacodemons in the corridors. And then, yeah, you might be able to hear distant teleporting traps. So that's something this map does quite a lot. In fact, the Vrak series does quite a lot, which I think is a pretty cool little um, sort of trope for it to adopt, which is the big teleporter traps happen far away. And you can hear them. And you can hear the monsters that are going to teleport in. But then you have to sort of like, you don't know where they are and you have to come back to an area that you've been and wonder with dread what the hell has teleported in. Fortunately this time around, it doesn't seem that bad, right? Hmm. Wrong, there's still more to come. Yep, multiple areas. And this isn't even it either. But I really do want to hang on to the health that I have because as you can see I don't even have armor yet. Ah oh, yeah, this happens in PR Boom. GZ Doom seems to uh, rectify it, but in PR Boom, not so. This pinky gets stuck and blocks a bunch of monsters that should be teleporting in. So I might just leave that for a sec because this is one of the toughest bits of the map. The dreaded staircase. This is a pain in the ass to fight up the staircase because there are quite a lot of dudes up there. Hit scan, monkey buy, and as you can see, Cacodemons, and I think a Baron all quite annoying because you want to get closer to actually land your shots but you don't want to get so close that it's hard to dodge especially all the hit scan and so on this is that window that we could see up near the platform with the super shotgun so rather than use all my shells on the enemies that haven't teleported in i'm going to not look a gift horse in the mouth and use them here first and then we'll deal with those other guys later but yeah the architecture in this map is uh you know Simple, but really sort of tasteful. It sells things well. Something I think Eric Arm learned a lot from, if indeed he was inspired by this, but I'm sure he was. Like, this looks a hell of a lot like Side X. And a lot of people were generally inspired by Vrak, as I say. Like, if you're watching this channel, a Doom channel, chances are you will have at least heard of Vrak at some point in the past. For good reason. As you can see, this is really cool. Now, forget which one of these, there's an optimal order to do these in. I'm pretty sure actually it's... Ah, yes. Thank you. Pretty sure it's this one. Want to come up and do this area first? Yeah, I think this is right. And do I have a med kit in reserve? Wow. That's the difference between knowing the map. Okay, so I've released this guy, and so now these guys are going to teleport in anyway. And do I want to... Actually, there's no real need. Actually, yes, they're infighting. Perfect. Now we can go. I get the chance to kill them from close up again after I've done this bit anyway. Up we go. Okay, yep, yeah, next secret is there where that pool of blood denotes, but first... I'm gonna clear out this room. Actually, I don't even think there's a switch in here, so the only reason to come here is just to... Whoa! Kill the cacodemon in here, but damn. So you can see what I mean about a lot more dudes would have teleported in or are supposed to. And thank goodness I have that other med kit because I'll probably go grab it. Or do I really need to? Is that being way too safe and cautious? Probably is being too safe and cautious. Can you guys... Oh, that was, that was so satisfying. Being able to just pop them with the single barrel shotgun like that. Hell yeah. Okay, and this secret allows us to drop down here and we get a med kit anyway, so cool. Okay. Now I just need to take out this guy. There's a thin little set of stairs there, so it's definitely time to just kill this guy before advancing from down here. And let's go. I'm pretty sure this takes us to... This is a cool room. Hey, yo. 
Kind of reminds me of like the computer area in what's it, 2001 Space Odyssey? Yes, the lift. So as soon as I grab the Berserk, this lift is going to start going down. But it does so very slowly, and in fact, it's really not that bad. Yeah. As you can see, it doesn't go down far, and there's not that many dudes around, so... Don't sweat it too much. Thank you for fighting, kids. And then... Whoa. We just move on. So there's nothing in these two areas except for the dudes who came out. We actually just have to go through one of these two areas, and look at this! Quite the fight. I'll grab this now. Let's just get them all in fighting and then run around the other side. Because once you drop down there, it's very hard to come back or it takes a while, so I would like to grab all the stuff up here before dropping down. And apparently I needed to get even more infighting going. You guys were slacking. The damn slack demons, you can never count on them. There, but I hear lots of some chain gunner is going absolutely ham right now. I really wish the Mancubus got into some sort of fighting, but okay, it didn't. Oh god. Oh god, this just sort of happens on this map sometimes. There goes those medkits and the Berserk. This is, well, an unmitigated disaster to be perfectly honest. Got way too greedy trying to grab that box of shells and now I'm going to be dealing with low health for a long time. Trust me, a long time. Okay, I do get a stim pack here, but I think that's going to be it. Okay, thank god, there's a little bit more. But yeah, this map... It's, you know, it gives you plenty of health and ammo, but sometimes you find yourself desperately wishing for more than there actually is at various moments. Oh, okay, yeah, I know what's happening here. I think we're on our way down to the slime room, slowly but surely. So first things first, we've got to deal with this hit scan with relatively low health. And then, yeah, the slime room, um, before you know how to actually do the slime room, I used to find it quite challenging. Okay, yeah, lots of distant hit scan. I don't know how long my very, very nice health is going to last for. It's managing to hold out because it is just so nice. Hell yeah, say it with me. Nice. And the perfect amount of shells. You can see at this point, you got all the shells you could ever possibly need now. Or do we? Ah, uh, don't think you don't survive. A super shotgun blast. That's very rude of you. Okay, so I'm just trying to be really, really careful, although I am about to pick up a med kit, and I really should. Well, there you go. There goes my nice health. Thanks, Shotgunner, for ruining my stupid meme. Okay, and there's a med kit there, which I will leave. Because I don't know how... Oh, my God. I still will leave it. That wasn't a particularly high damage roll, fortunately. No, no, no. Well, maybe I should grab it. Unless this is the slime room, like I think it might be. No, it's not. I remember what this is. This is the cargo bay. Yeah, and this is actually quite a tricky little room to fight because, as you can see, there's a chain gunner down there who can see you. If he's in a fight, please die. Can the rest of you silly demons actually kill the chain gunner for me? Please. A police. But yeah, this room kind of sucks because it's really awkward to fight in. And, okay, now the chain gunner's still alive. So this is going badly. Okay. Okay. Managed to eke myself out a spot where I'm pretty safe. And I've picked up a med kit. So now let's press the switch which opens up the next section. But, as you might imagine, we will not be alone on our way back. And yeah, how cool is this little cargo area with the crates being suspended? You know, it had been done in like Quake 2 and everything before, but this is, you know, cool. I've seen it in a bunch of other wards, but still. It's just cool, you know, like you're in a cargo loading area, you can imagine spaceships land in here, and you load them up. Cool stuff. Alright, all that hanging around, I think probably means I'm going to be under pressure in a way that I don't usually like to allow. And remember how I said all the shells you could ever possibly need? Well, you would be amazed at how quickly they start to run out here. Especially when you're fighting these guys. So yeah, normally I've already made it back to the door and I'm not sort of getting penned in by barons like this. 
but I stopped to commentate on how nice I thought the cargo bay looked. And yeah, in case you're wondering, man, use a better weapon. I don't have them yet. I do not have them yet. It's the super shotgun or bust. You know, the chain gun's not going to cut it against barons. And well, the shells, I'm making a liar out of myself because they've held up pretty damn well. Maybe I just know the map that much better now. Obviously I have played it a few times in preparation for this video so that I would have things to talk about. Uh, but I didn't expect to be quite so practiced. This map definitely isn't that easy when you're not aware of what's coming. As I always say, you can make a bingo card, take a shot every time I say that about a map and you'd be a maggot in no time. But still, it is very true. Okay, so now we go back to loop and now we go to the slime area that I've been alluding to. Radiation. This room is pretty damn tricky when you don't know what's coming. So, that must be no clipping fireballs exploding on the wall, right? Unless there is an impact here. Oh, I can't go back. Well, okay, we're in the slime room. So obviously I want that radiation suit, but you see these cages here, right? And all these switches, so you have to press all the switches. But as soon as I jump off this platform, those cages are going to fill with revenants. But there is a way to basically cheese this whole room. You ready? Let's go. Let's try and get the radiation suit first before anything. Okay, I haven't. So what you can do is a little tunnel here, teleport into, grab the suit, fall backwards, Megasphere. So I tried to not totally cheese it, but once you have fallen, you'd be a fool not to just kill the revenants from down here, in my opinion. Unless you're speedrunning, of course. So let's do this, and then once the revenants are dead, the radiation suit doesn't matter so much anymore because I can take my time with the jumps. And even if I do fall off, well, I have a Megasphere. It'll be fine. So yeah, if you fall down, you must come use this teleporter. But okay, let's go. Oh my god, I've tried to give myself a bit too much of a run-up. How embarrassing. Okay, let's try this again. Oh yeah, and then the first time that you uh, step off your initial platform, you get ambushed by chain gunners, as you can see, and there's really not much you can do about getting perforated by them. Okay, now... We just make our way across all the platforms, pressing the switches. Trying not to fall off. And yeah, every time you press it, obviously lowers that just that little bit more. And I still need to press, yeah, this one. You can't make the jump straight across here, so that's why I went all the way around. Oh, and of course I've fallen on the very last one. The very last. And yep, not enough momentum. Jeez, it was all going so well, and I have made a fool of myself for a change. Okay, there we go. Goodbye, slime room. But yeah, before I knew about the secret passage and the megasphere hidden behind there, that room can be really nasty and you're wondering what the hell. Now check this out for a cool bit of like aesthetic set piece building. We're in like a mainframe. Big computer. Pretty cool. You gotta come up in here, and the whole time there's all this sort of tension, like what's gonna be in the mainframe? Well, place your bets, take a guess, what is in the mainframe? Let's climb up into Hal. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Doom Guy. Well, Hal, I'm afraid we're gonna have to climb into your depths, and we're gonna have to do what we're gonna do. Teleport. Back to here, and you were probably who I could hear. I don't know where the hell that guy came from, but okay. That was what was in Hal's guts. And we get a rocket launcher and we come back to here. Good bit of level design, teleporting you straight to where you need to go, the yellow door. So let's clean up who's out here on this little spacey platform. Doom guy's wearing a spacesuit, of course, and the exit. There we go. Although, take a look at that kill count. I must have missed something like 170 enemies. Oh well, that's the end. Psych! Of course it's not the end. I'm not going to do this playthrough without missing that many enemies. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's right. There's quite a lot of bad dudes here. I'm trying to just let some infighting happen. Okay, I've pissed that Cacodemon off. That's alright. The Arachatron's going to be getting wrecked now, so I guess it's time to start shooting some demons. Sometimes in Doom, you do need to actually shoot the demons. You know, just occasionally. 
it's a bit of a thing. So I've heard. Uh, let's make myself some space. I don't want to get trapped in that little hallway there with a couple of Baronies. The Bruiser Brothers themselves. I'd like a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't even know if you could tell that I was using the word B instead of P there, given my slightly sick voice at the moment. Yeah. Let's take these dudes out. Obviously, go down this hallway, and... Yes, we are in... This room. So... This room, for all you who are probably curious as to what the hell this room is, runs this sort of like slimy... Well, no, it's not slimy, sorry. It's got a space floor to it. But there's... Yeah four corners like all these dudes here. What we actually want to be doing I think is getting the Mancubi out of the way but first I want to just let these chain gunners do their thing because that'll save me a lot of ammo. I've totally wrecked the Mancubus that's straight in front of them. Are they going to kill this guy? Come on man, you can do it. You can do it. No, you can't do it. You cannot do it. Yeah, so there's shootable switches here as you can see. First one opens this door. And we get to fight a couple of skeletons for our trouble. And then going through the door allows us the new angle to shoot the next shootable switch. And yeah, the infighting in this room has mostly taken care of everyone already, which is really quite awesome. Ah, oh, the imp was infighting. Sorry, imp. And, whoa, that was, that no clipped. I don't know if you saw that. That switch over there releases these revenants. I want to just back away because that Mancubus on the far side is still alive and I'll probably get hit by it in the meantime if I stood on this platform dodging the revenants. Uh, I'm not getting in particularly good shots. Still not. There we go. And there was a zombie man right there. Should I just snipe this Mancubus? Is it weak? Actually, no, there's no need, because when I come around here... ...and shoot the switch... Man, there's no, there's no clipping fireballs, alright? I am going to get rid of it, because the fireballs seem to be loving to no-clip right now. Thank you for dying. We want to shoot this. And yeah, as you can hear, there's a lot of revenants waiting to teleport in at some point. I wonder when. Well, first things first. We need to go through the next door. Take out these two. And yeah, this this bit actually kind of reminds me a little bit of Vrak 2. Vrak 2 is much tougher. Something more like 700 enemies in that one. Really cool though. Alright, now this final door opens. What could be here? Yes. Banana Man himself. The first one in the ward, I think. But we get rewarded with a plasma rifle. And the red key. But that's not all. This airlock's already been opened, by the way, which I always found kind of strange. Why not make you open it? Behind the red key is a secret. Hissy! Yes, Hissy. What a legendary Doom meme. If you know Hissy the Cacodemon plush toy, well, you're an OG. And a legend. Alright, so this uh, invulnerability that Hissy has kindly given us. There's not really any better use for it but then right now, so let's go. Try and run back as quick as possible. As you can hear, we are going to be running straight back into an ambush, as always. Hissy's friend. A couple of Hissy's friends, but we really want to just bust out of Hissy's friends. Yeah, into here. And then with your vulnerability, it's really easy to see this room, which is a secret, apparently. It's actually really dark in here, as you can see, without the invulnerability, so it's a lot harder to see otherwise. And now we do something that I love to do and have been doing in my Rush playthrough. Pump rockets into a choke point. Okay, I see a Revenant missile coming. And a Mancubus Fireball. Actually, I should just go and grab the supercharge behind me. That's the reward in this secret. And yeah, pump these rockets into that choke point, and we are nearly done. As you can see by the kill count. Uh, yeah, screw it, Plasma. Still a Mancubus alive, damn, of course. Of course I had to strafe back into a Cacodemon Fireball. And yeah, 404. 
that is, I'm pretty damn sure, what we want to be finished with now because look at the party in the exit room. It's a party in the exit room. And yeah, there's two art files in there. So this is a curious room to deal with because the art files can zap you through the bars, obviously. But everybody else really struggles to hit you through them. In fact, I'm not sure what they can. So you can either just stand here and methodically just wait for all the infighting to take out the art files just like that. Or get up close to the bars like I am. And try not to let have that happen, so... I wasn't sure whether he was infighting or not, and the damn pain elementals fat ass was in the way, so I couldn't tell. But yeah, you just want to try and take out... Whoops! Oh, I got saved there. Take out the art file and the pain elemental ASAP, like that. And then, here we go. I could be opening the bars at this point, but, well... You're less likely to get hit, I say, as I get hit. Twice. Okay, screw you then. You want to fight one-on-one? -on -one? Let's fight one-on-one. -on -one. And that is... A Vrakken good time. So yeah, I think it's a really, really cool series of maps, and this is a really cool opening to it. Made all the way back in 2000, but still actually looks quite fresh, like, um... You know, if this came out even later than that, I wouldn't have questioned it at all. It's a really cool little map. Uh, well, it's not even that little, it's sort of big-ish, but there we go. Vrak 1. I do hope at some stage on this channel to play Vrak 2 and 3 as well, but seeing as I wanted to play the Vrak maps, you've got to start with Vrak 1. I hope you enjoyed, and, uh, you know, leave a comment below if you know of any other really cool old space-themed maps that are like Vrak, that if, uh, you know, I like this, that I might enjoy as well. Because, yeah, like I say, I'm a huge sucker for this sort of thing. And, yep. That's all for now. Hope you enjoyed this playthrough of Rack, and I'll see you in the next playthrough I do. Peace.